All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Serious Angler Podcast. We are here in Tulsa for the Bassmaster Classic. I'm your host, Bailey Eigbert, and I got two studs with me here. We got recent Bassmaster Opens champ, Mr. Kyle Austin, and of course, no stranger to the show, Mr. John Garrett, uh, fighting through for a podcast for us this yeah. morning. Are you, are you going to live through this thing? I think so. I think I think I'm going to make it. Yeah. yeah. We uh we got a interesting text from John last night. <laughs> he's in some rough shape, but he's here. He's trooping through the uh, it's the Bassmaster Classic. You gotta you gotta be here for Classic Week. But um, dude, first time on the show, Kyle, yeah, off uh, an open win. You know, day one of the Classic. That you know, a year from now, you're gonna be it. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it's set in definitely that I've made the Classic, but it is mm-hmm. weird being at the Expo knowing that you're already qualified for next year's class Classic. So yeah. it uh, it's definitely different. I don't think many people. <laughs> get that chance because the open is usually later in the year so it's a uh, definitely different but excited dude it's got to be it's got to be absolutely surreal because then i know you were saying i'm not going to go to takeoff until i'm in takeoff yeah so kind of full circle now i know you're gonna be in that year yeah from, year from now uh but yeah day one the bassmaster classic we're sitting here who's the shakur still still leading as Shakur's of right now it's leading and uh huff is in second right now so you said he had four yeah four for 14 yeah oh boy uh I don't know what just happened. There's a bubble with a thumbs up. People watching, yes, they know. Like it. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're here at the X2 Power Booth. The expo is about to start here in about an hour or so. Um, first day of the expo. I, I love this time of year, at least for me, being up in New York. I yeah. mean, you guys travel all the time, see a bunch of people. I don't get to see anybody until I these know. events. So this is kind of like my Christmas. I get to go and see the family, the crew. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, beyond the, the classic ex- itself. What is exciting about this week to you guys as anglers? Oh, uh, for me, it's won the tournament, but, uh, you know, traveling against these guys used to travel with, uh, with John over here fishing against him. And we, uh, all year we're all competitive and, you know, mm-hmm. we're at tournaments and you're just focused on the tournament and, uh, you come here and if you're, if you're not into Bassmaster Classic, it's a good time. You get to hang out, you know, maybe grab some dinner, or, you know, go out at night and have enjoy the nightlife <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, uh, you get to hang out with everybody you compete against and everybody in the industry seems like it's in one town so it's, it's always a good time you meet yeah. a lot of cool people that way heck yeah what are you doing yeah. yeah same thing i mean like kyle said we're we're all competitors when we're traveling for tournaments so we get to all come together and not have that competitive side yeah. you know just kind of let loose have fun uh talk about you know on the water off the water stuff and and really like you know the um x2 and like i mean all all the sponsors we work with all year we all get to come together it's kind of like this whole industry is a big family. We don't get to see each other a lot, but now we all get to come together and, and chat and th- talk about things that we're going to do for next year, work on projects, and, uh, yeah, just hang out. It's a good time. For you guys, it's a big deal in regards of, like, if you're working the show. Yeah. You know, it's – obviously, you got your on-the-water important from your career aspect, but this is also a very important part for you guys because it's relationship building, hanging out with sponsors, potential sponsors, right. shaking hands, you know, signing babies, things like that, you know, yeah. now that you're famous yeah. champion over yeah. here. Uh, but uh, it's important for you guys, but it's – in the end, like you mentioned, it's it's just fun, dude. I just yeah. love seeing everybody uh, at these – it's – I feel like on a – when it's – the expo's open, everyone's here. I feel like you can't go 20 feet without seeing somebody you know and you yeah. stop and talk. Where it's like you got to carve out an hour if you want to go to the other side of the building because you know you're going to run into some people. Yeah. But uh, looking at the tournament itself, um, from your guys' perspective, have either guys fished Grand before? I have. Yeah. I feel like you've yeah. fished all over the dang country yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think it's it's setting up right now? And are you shocked or what's your kind of perspective on how they're catching them? Yeah, it looks like to me, it looks like last time I was here it was in the fall and. Um, Looks like the water's a little bit lower than normal, and it looks like it's really clear compared to Grand. Usually, you look at Grand; it's it's dirty anywhere in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I don't know. I think guys that are giving a jig and on rock lakes is gonna be uh, hard to beat here. Yeah, they clipped earlier as I was watching uh, in the hotel before we got over here. They had uh, a shot to Jason Christie, and he's got the jig in his hand. I know. with a nice growl. Yeah, he's like, yeah, something's coming. But uh, it seems like guys are catching them a multitude of different ways. Apparently, I saw guys were catching them on top water this morning. Yep. Hackney was catching them on a, a plopper style bait. Yep. So it's the, the the whole rave conversation right now that I don't even want to get into before. And I think it's appeasing some people that are yeah. uh, that like to see some top water action. But what about you, John? Any yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think this is good, like, this, the time of year we're hitting the classics is going to be great. We're going to have the old school traditional fishing going mm-hmm. on and some of the new school stuff mixed in. I think 
for a guy to win this, I don't think he's going to have one thing locked in. I think you're going to see fish get caught off the bank, on the bank, on boat docks, and in between. So I think it's going to be a fun tournament to watch. And I like these tournaments where it's not one on a specific spot. We have so many tournaments we watch where someone's hunkered down on one sweet spot they find offshore. This tournament, you're going to see a lot of game time decisions take place. And I, I think it's going to be a fun tournament to unfold. Yeah, I was chatting with a few guys at, at, uh, at Media Day yesterday. Um, and kind of just having low key conversations because they're all getting cameras put in their face and doing a which is is, is good, uh, great for the branding, great for the media outlets. But I was going to like to chat with some buddies and just kind of have a low key conversation. There's a few of them that said that they're not going to look at forward tomorrow. They're going to put it down. There's some guys that are cranking shallow. They're burning the bank. Like it's you got a whole like you said. It's, it's going to be a whole variety mm. of things to make it happen. But it's yeah. it's got to be an interesting concept for me when you look at a practice standpoint from a tournament angler. Where you get three days of practice, and then what is it, three or four days until the tournament actually starts? Yeah. You get like one ride around day basically for eight yeah. hours. And uh, from that, from your guys' pr perspective, how do you approach that in practice? Uh, you just try not to get locked on to anything. I pr would prefer that. Um, back when I started, I fished a lot of BFLs and stuff, and that's how I did it. You know, I'd practice like one day, like a week before, and I just show up for the tournament. So you just didn't get dialed into like, oh, I got to run this, run that. You just kind of catch a pattern as you go. and and uh, just kind of go off the hip. And I think that's why you see a lot of the, uh, you know, veteran guys always, you know, show up during the classic. Yeah. It's it's more shooting off the hip mm -hmm. than it is, hey, I got to get dialed. Because, you know, what I fish, like the opens, I mean, you got to be you gotta be pretty much on them, you know, come tournament day and against that many boats. So I think this is a little bit different. And you'll see some some uh, veteran shine, I think, in the classic. Yeah, I definitely think there's a trend there. And yeah. guys that have been there before, a little bit more relaxed the nerves are kind of calmed down right but what do, what do you think too as well with the practice yeah i mean kyle kyle hit it on the head i mean it's not a traditional practice and we're not fishing the hours leading up to the tournament so i think a lot of you know what goes in a role in this is people just finding areas they like and what they you know what they're looking for what they like to do um, finding areas of fish and they're going to change in the three or four days they're not fishing so just getting an area with a good population and changing with the fish is something big that a lot of those people with a lot of experience has, and um, there's not many people on that roster who hasn't had a ton of experience where they come to the opens or they've been on the elites for a while. But yeah, just getting in those areas they like and feel comfortable in and changing throughout each tournament day is, is going to be big this week. Yeah. So somebody that is, I guess, going through practice and really not, like you said, not getting set on something, but kind of just making mental notes of the different things they see and just being very open, like free about it, right. you yeah. know, not getting too serious on one pattern. So do you think there's a big advantage in this event with how, like how long it could be from practice tournament of being mentally just free going to day one with not really a too hard of a set game plan, like maybe have a step one, but having some notes of, oh, I remember this, this, this in practice, I can make an adjustment easier versus getting set on something. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, do you want you go, this? You yeah, I think this is this style tournament. It's only three day. I'm gonna call it three day shootout versus a four, and the practice is different. So I think this tournament, really every year, is more of let me just go fishing because it's so different from three days ago in practice. It is now. It's like like you're saying, you know, they make mental notes of there's some fish that were off the bank here. They might be up on those laydowns or docks now. So it's more of just take what you see in the week and just literally just go fishing um during this week of the classic yeah i definitely think that is the way to go but i mean granted i'm the like we joked about in fantasy fishing earlier this week we're just the i'm just the armchair quarterbacks you guys are actually the qbs on site and uh in in the mix but um it definitely seems like that is the best approach at least in recent years when you talk with the winners yeah they're like whether it's a second day or third day they're like yeah everything that happened in practice basically was done like yeah. there was nothing nothing was going on uh, and they just made a complete 180 but um it's always exciting with the tournament. There's always a lot of the, the tournament coverage. Uh, but on the flip side, just talking about the classic in general in the future, uh, obviously trying to get on the elite series, major first classic yep. on the elites, rookie season. Although I think you're definitely in one of the discussions of like, is he actually a rookie? Cause he's been around the block for <laughs> forever. Um, looking ahead at the classics, what's one thing or maybe a location you guys would like to see them go to that they maybe have never been to before. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, obviously, Santee. I want to come to South Carolina. <laughs> Santee, <laughs> but, uh, please. Been the yeah. obvious answer. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, but, you know, it's, it takes a lot more than just the lake for the classic. You got to have cities nearby. You got to have, you know, plenty of places for everybody to stay. So there's a lot that goes into it. I don't know, maybe like a, uh, maybe like a northern classic would be yeah. pretty cool. Like, 
It's good to catch small mouth. Like a or, June kind of time frame? Yeah, like, like just, I don't know. Uh, maybe not June because then it'll be spawn fest, but yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just, you can see it. We should go to New York like this time of the year. Like right when it thaws out, I feel like the small mouth bite. So. See, as a New Yorker, I don't want that because I don't want more people coming up in April when <laughs> it's that dumb. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> yeah. It would be, to your point though, the weights would be ridiculous. 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 It's something different. Um, I want to see, I don't know, classic. You just want to see big bass. I mean, that's what yeah. the fans come here for. Yeah. I don't, you know, them tough fisheries. It's cool for us, you know, because I like tough fisheries. Just, you know, it's not really a slug fest. kind of easier. Like the 10, 11, 12 pounds, or you can compete with that versus a slug fest. But I think as a fan growing up with it when I was a kid, I mean, I just want to see giants. I mean, I remember watching Gerald Swindle catch that giant at Clear Lake oh, yeah. on TV when I was a kid. And just, that's what you want to see as a fan. So Yeah, I mean, dude, some of the lakes – up north if you can if you can time it right in that april you'd be given that three-day bassmaster limit of run for its money oh, with what 100%. you could put up because yeah. they're all dumb as heck more than they usually are in the north and they're all fat and happy before you know they're actually getting up and spawning so you could you could do some crazy stuff crazy yeah. stuff yeah. up north but what about you man where's the location you think you'd love to see the classic go you know a, a location and i wouldn't mind seeing a different time of year too because growing up we were used to seeing those bassmaster classics first term of the year Everybody was like, looked like the Michelin man. Yeah. I had gloves on. It was like 20 degrees. They were breaking ice at the ramp. I would love to see it early in the year, end of January, beginning of February, some kind of bigger Tennessee River Lake or, you know, system, something that's not Knoxville, you know, Gunnersville, a Pickwick, uh, so, you know, something a little bigger. And I want to see everybody freezing. I used to love that because, yeah. <laughs> like Kyle said, I mean, it's it's all about the big bass. I mean, that's what bass is is around big bass, big stage, big dreams. And right. I think when you get in that, the earlier in the year you get, the more big fish you're going to catch. So I kind of want to go back to seeing people dressed up, freezing, and catching big fish. That's what I, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, there'd be times you'd be running out and it's ice all over your boat, 25, 26 yeah. degrees, but you'd, they'd be freaking chewing <laughs> yeah. the face off. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, they could make that happen in New York up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's the, that's the one interesting thing is, you mentioned earlier about having a location with uh, where you can have the expo and things like that. Right. I think after this year with the hour and a half, almost two hour drive, I think they could do it anywhere now. We could all drive to Charleston, yeah. hang out downtown Charleston at night. It'd be, it'd be a good time. Watch. Yeah, you're you're going to see a Santee like classic now with Charleston. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this. And they're like, Kyle's on to something now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you could mean shoot. It's probably better in the North with that cold, cold water to put up and travel with those fish. Yeah, it is. for sure. Granted, it's not, as warm here but i was thinking like back to the ray roberts classic when they had those oxygen tanks running uh shotgun with the, the yep. guys with the boats yeah. coming in uh but they did i remember they did a, a nice adjustment where they had like guys somewhat weigh in i think at the ramp so they weren't bringing back the full bag or something yeah. along the lines of that but um man what a like this this whole thing it's it's such a spectacle uh, spectacle for our sport like the different logistics that come into everything mm -hmm. uh it's like it's when you go to classic after classic and you're a part of it, especially you guys that are go, 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 like on the road all the time, uh, I feel like it's hard to slow down and look back at how big bass fishing has become and how fast it's, it's blowing up. I mean, you drive in, there's a 100-foot billboard of Gussie's face. Like, it's – it's and that's the thing, like, next year, the two years from now, like, that could be you guys up there. It's kind of crazy to think about when you kind of like slow down you're like – realize how big this thing actually is oh, absolutely i mean that's the super bowl of bass fishing it's everything you can think of i mean you get off the airport i mean when i got to atlanta airport and i got to the the gate where it said heading to tulsa and you show up and there's guys but you could tell they're going to the classic you you, you know, know who's in the fishing uh, industry the, the fishing industry <laughs> shirts i mean different yeah. brands you're like all right everybody's going to the same place so it's pretty cool to see it that way it's definitely bigger than what you could dream of being here so it's a it's a cool event yeah, and it's it's funny, like we talking about in the airport, like you could have just your skeeter hat on and plain clothes, no jersey, and we might not know each other, but like I can tell you're a oh, fishing yeah. guy. We For already sure. have a connection. Yeah, no doubt. We got something to talk about. That's yeah. what's that's what's freaking awesome about this sport, and I think what makes it unique. Where it's like, if you're wearing an NFL uh, apparel or something like that, it's okay. He likes football, but we might not have that instant, yeah, you know, for sure, something yeah. to to hit off on. But um, this week, looking at Grand Lake. What are some curveballs you guys think might happen that maybe some of the majority of folks aren't anticipating? Uh, I don't really know. I really don't know a whole lot what's going on out there. Um, 
the biggest curveball, I think, just the weather fluctuating. I think it's supposed to be 38 degrees tonight. So uh, the guys catch him on that plopper today. It might not happen as early tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know a whole lot what's going on out there. But yeah. I think this time of year, weather is, is key. You know, them cold nights are not fun when they're when they're trying to spawn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you see today, there's zero wind blowing and there is basically zero big bass being caught. I mean, really, there's not a ton unless of Unless your name's Cody Huff. Unless your name's Cody Huff. <laughs> now, Grand Lake's important with the wind. Grand Lake is one of the most wind-driven lakes on the, in the country, even though it's dirty. So I think where you're going to see, if we have a little wind the next two mornings, how important that first hour of the day is. So, I mean, you you could potentially see a classic winner catch their fish in the first hour of the next two days if that wind blows. So, really, yeah. the next two morning bites are going to be super important for whoever's going to win this tournament. That's that's a really good point. Um, so for you guys looking at this, obviously everybody's talking about Jason Christie's event, you know, Luke Palmer, hometown boys, uh, which it's an obvious be, who to be looking out for to win this. But from your guys' eyes, if you were betting your 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 savings on somebody to win this, who's your, who's the guy you're rocking with? Well, I mean, looking at Bass Track, I'm kind of regret. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I fished against Tyler Williams last year. And yeah. I'm telling you, any time we went to a rock lake that had rock in it and they bit a jig, I mean, he beat us pretty bad. So <laughs> if I had to uh, take a bet, I mean, as long as he can, you know, handle the spotlight of the classic, which he's a laid back guy, so I'm sure he will. Yeah. Tyler Williams would be uh, one I would pick. Just Was kind of a sleeper because, you know, he's a rookie. And yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of people. Uh, thinking about the rookies so mercer was saying that tyler williams is like a blend between uh john cox and john daly in the yeah. <laughs> that's pretty yeah, good no doubt. it's pretty good but what about you john man there's so many people that come to mind um and when i think about someone winning this tournament like besides the the local guys but like my mind goes elsewhere and I might be persuaded by what Bass Track says right now I, I don't really know but like some of the younger guys has been hot you know recently Jay's been doing real good. Cody's been catching some. Tyler Williams, Kyle Patrick, like yeah. there's so many people, you know, Milliken's one of them. So many guys that are just so cool, calm, and collected that have been catching fish for the past couple of years really good or, you know, better or, or the best in the country right now. So when I think of that, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that people have the more momentum swing than I am the odds on favorites, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's one of those events where it's like, an elite series event, you can kind of go with like a location or like a, a, a bias towards if they're the hometown, hometown yeah. hero, which, um, yeah, obviously makes sense when your name's Jason Christie, but or um, Kyle Austin, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> yeah, that is the yeah. year of the hometown favorite. So, I, yeah. I think, uh, to me, you know, everybody's to say if the fish were spawning, you lose the hometown advantage, yeah. you know, everybody thought you wanted it tough. But I think in pre spawn tournament, especially in March, when the fish are steady moving, like. They might not be on that bank today, but it might be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes that local, if you can use it to your advantage, I think it helps. I mean, you can run to places that they haven't been all week, but you just know this time of year they might be there. And I think if you get on a good rotation, a local could really, you know, you take it to advantage and, and dominate it. But we'll see. It's a uh, yeah. it's still the best master classic. A lot of it's yeah. usually somebody wins that you have no ideas about to win. So I mean, yeah, like to your point, like when you're saying with Grand being very wind driven, like. A local might know how to, you know, one little key thing here yeah. or there that gets grand to, to go when it's not yeah. blowing. But it definitely seems like the event where all some of that can get thrown out the window. Because, like, you look at Elite Livacy, everyone thinks, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. Texas Hammer as well and only the South. But, yeah, you look at the past classics and Lee's up there finessing whatever needs to be done. Yeah. He's there when it comes to yeah. these big championship-style events. There's some guys that just seem like, like Hank Cherry, great example, yeah. where it's, yeah. Hasn't really been up in the mix all that often from a, a regular elite series event, but when it comes to classics, he just freaking shows goes up. for it. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's cool to see that it almost throws a wrench when you're like a fan, you know, trying to uh, oh, yeah. you know call out who you think might win or a fantasy fishing things like that. But uh, that's I think what makes this so exciting is you get these curveballs thrown at you like Jay Shakur <laughs> yep. leading this thing, this uh, Wisconsin boy with and a it, walleye background. Like as we're talking about Hank, it says he's currently in third place, so he. He has it. Yeah, there, yeah. you there you go. Exhibit yeah. A. And he's got one on right now. He's just at that thing for Bassmaster Classics. Yeah, for sure. There's just those guys, man, that for whatever reason, they just show up yep. in big games. Like right. you see it across everything. And do you think that's just straight up a mindset or is that just like a killer instinct? That's just something you're born with. I mean, they're just, they're not worried about getting paid. I mean, this isn't, nobody cares about who finished the second. You know, at the end of the day, that we for, I, 
like you can't name who finished second the last six classics, you know. But you can besides Welcher, besides Welcher, yeah. but you can probably <laughs> name who won every one of them, you know. Yeah. Right. So it's uh nobody remembers second place. It's all about winning, and I think that's just the mindset they have. And I mean, if you if you have that mindset, and a lot of times like them big baits or you know you'll see anglers do stuff they don't usually do, but they know, that, mm-hmm. and they have to do it. You know, they're yeah. not. Some tournaments, you're just like, okay, if I just get out here and make a ten thousand dollar check, and then we'll roll on. But in this one, I mean, it's all about just winning it. So, yeah, I mean, you're—I don't think you're bringing much of a check home after this one, driving an hour and a half back for for practice. No, yeah. you're, you're, like, back, <laughs> you're spending so. all of that in gas right yeah. there. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a it's a super intriguing perspective, and it's we can go on and on about that. But um, flipping back to the expo, what do you guys have coming up this weekend for if anybody's looking to come to the expo or things that they should keep an eye on social wise anything with you guys as uh brands or anything like that that people should uh keep up with yeah i mean i'll i'll be busy all week i gotta post on my social where i'll be um yeah we got some cool things striking lose coming out i would say newer um new spinning reel from lose it's definitely different from the traditional things that we have on the market now but other than that yeah i'll just be hopping around place to place and uh shaking hands signing Signing Sign babies, baby. signing <laughs> babies, yeah. But look, I, I want to say something real quick before we dig into this. We were talking about hometown experience. A buddy Kyle here just won on Santee, as you all know. Um, Kyle's not only like one of the greatest people, like such a good guy, like in the fishing industry, can't really get a better person. But, man, his win a um, couple weeks ago on Santee it was, was truly amazing. I mean, he's from there. But, man, it wasn't just a, a hometown win. It was just like such a veteran win. I mean, he had to catch him. 27 28 pounds a day yeah. and not with a made, broken boat with a broken boat i mean you've seen them up in the river throwing a trap on some current breaks and some hard spots and throwing a wacky worm catching big ones around isolated cypress trees i just i, I just want to say congrats man he's been so close to making the elite series and has such a good run in the opens every year i just really like to see a, a breakthrough you know to, to yeah. someone who truly deserves it for sure i appreciate it yeah, yeah man for been, sure man John been fishing against each other for a while. He's uh I think I'm the gonna be the new John Gare. I, I feel was like just I'm gonna say I think he passed forever. the torch off. <laughs> so yeah. We're uh we're trying to get where John's at, you know, on the lease here. That's the ultimate goal. But you know, everybody's dreams to fish for a living and I'm blessed to be able to do that. You know, whether it's on Santee Cooper, chasing catfish, bass, <laughs> whatever species <laughs> I right. catch frogs apparently. Yeah. So yeah, uh, dude. Or, you know, fishing tournament. So I live in the dream I've always wanted to, so nothing to nothing's changing, you know. Hell yeah, man. I mean it was uh, one, I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit before, but for folks, if they listen to this, they probably listen to BTL. Yeah. And if they haven't, you guys need to check out the episode because like, were, we were joking yesterday. You guys like, yeah, I think we talked like 50 minutes about catfishing and five minutes about bass fishing. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, by the way, you won. But it's <laughs> dude, like that is what fires me up is straight up fish heads. Yeah, because that's just the one where you see I think you see the true instincts come into play. Like because I think you probably can look at things from like from a, a an instinctual standpoint when you're out on the water like when you know what bass are doing when you know what the cats are doing when you know like That's when right. you're just out there in all of it yeah. and you're surrounded by it i feel like that helps you out in the long game like yeah. being able to make those adjustments on day two of the classic when everything you've had goes yeah. shit like it's yeah like y'all have always heard time on the water is key mm-hmm. and i mean you never heard time on the water chasing bass is key you know so just time on the water in general and uh chasing catfish you look at my stats it's, you know, I've always been kind of up and down, up and down. And as soon as I started, get, like, quit my job, started guiding full time and on the water as much as I am, my, you know, tournament results for bass has just gone up. You know, I've been a lot more consistent. But it's every day I have an eight hour tournament guiding. Like, whether I'm chasing catfish or chasing bass, it's, I got eight hours to get the job done. And it just gets me on that time clock. And you can kind of fish off of instincts a lot more and make better decisions during the tournament. And like last year, I mean, I thought I had a perfect season for me and it still come up short, but. And uh, the instincts was definitely a whole lot better than it yeah. used to be. Yeah, and I want I want to say something real quick. So that's that's what's great about our sport. I mean, we see people fishing the classic this week that are just traditional household brand names in in the sport of bass fishing. And you see guys, you know, half of them that are kind of new. They don't have their career set. But there's so many people coming up through the ranks that, like Kyle, myself, and a bunch of these other guys that are that are really talented. They put a ton of work in. And one win, like like Kyle's win last week, can can make a career, and that's what's great about the classic this week. If someone wins, that isn't that brand name, and that's what I love. I love seeing. I know Kyle loves seeing yeah, it. Yeah. Is someone win that? I'm not saying everybody on there is not deserving, but someone's deserving hasn't won a tournament that that can win one. That's what's special about the sport. Is that 
it gives everybody a chance to have that potential shine moment that we that we all strive for. So uh, that's why the classic special. That's why we have you know eight million viewers on Bass Live. You know, mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. I mean, that's that's kind of what the sport revolves around for Good sure. Time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and dude, it's you know we were talking that dinner last night. Some of the small intricacies that you applied into that win. I think that really goes into what you're talking about that that time on the water, yeah. uh, and that goes into one the dedication that you put forth, which does not go unnoticed. Like you got real ones like John that oh. see that, and it's it's not one like you got to go and, and preach to the choir that you're doing it because I think the people that the people that are already doing it, like John himself, like they see it, they acknowledge it, and that's where it's like people start rooting for you. It's I think there's a lot of people that. They might, uh, you know, for the classic, they'll say who they think might win, but they're in their heart. There's some guys that like they really want to win. Yeah. Like there's guys out there, I'm sure, that are killing for Hackney or Polonic to finally get a classic win. Yeah. And there's a whole handful. And it's then like when you get invested in the industry and you start making friends with these guys, and you're like, man, I would love for this guy to win. But then you're like, that means he loses. And then yeah. I'm saying, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Scott Martin last week when I won, you know, he finished third place behind me. And and he, uh, then he said it like four times to me. I mean, the nicest thing you say, like, He's glad he didn't win, you know. Like for him, the money comes and goes, you know. Helps he already won the first one. Yeah, yeah. Like he does yeah. pretty good. I mean, you know, fifty grand to some guys like that is not a lot of money. And it just for me, you know, I mean, it could be a difference in my career. I mean, it helps the sponsors I already have now that I could prove that hey, I can win. I can be in the top of it. And uh, and it's just like for me, it's like a story tell thing. You know, missing it last year by a spot or two, and then going back out there and all my friends are graduating on the lead series now. So yeah. that's kind of the little held back high school right there and back in the open so yeah, man. it was cool i felt like i did it for you know those guys that left and you know guys are still around it was uh it's pretty cool oh yeah man so uh, let me ask you this you, you talk about you know 50k being a big deal i think that should be a, it should be a, feel like yeah. a big deal to anybody right. but uh so you guys are to win the classic 300k yeah. what, what's your first purchase i would like to I'm not saying own a house, but at least have a house in my name. I like to be paying on a house. I've been renting a house forever, I feel like. Um, yeah, just to do something for the family. I feel like, and Kyle could take in, into this, I'm sure, as well as everybody trying to start up, is that this is not a financial savvy sport whatsoever. So it takes a lot of selfishness for us to chase what we love that makes zero sense on the financial side. So, yeah, do something for the family. That'd be great because they – you know, the wife and kid and family take so many risks at home while I'm like, eh, I need another transducer. I need another graph. <laughs> like, golly, you know, that's a lot of money. But, you know, the family deserves a, de- deserves a lot. So do something for them for sure. Yeah. I do very similar. I think I would, uh, you see a lot of guys win big tournaments, whether it was the old Force of Cup or Classic or something like that. And some guys, you know, didn't use the money in the right way. They might have just paid a lot of things off. And then that money's gone. I think I try to invest it somehow. Something that could make potential more money, you know. Yeah. So my family and like your family, you know, they could be well off for a long time instead of yeah. just uh, three hundred thousand is a lot of money. But when you fish, you know, bass tournaments, you can spend three hundred thousand pretty quick. easy. So, easy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of money, but it can go by fast. But if you do the right thing with it, it can uh, set your career off for the rest of your life. Yeah, and this, this I think for any of the younger folk, listen. I mean, I guess anybody these days that might have a tournament gambling addiction, take note of that because be <laughs> smart with your money. Uh, but I think, like, yeah, I mean, look at 300 k. I mean, we're looking at two thirds of it over here with uh, some of these boats, but yeah. it's it's getting steep yeah. for dang sure. Absolutely. But um, I think they might have opened the doors because we got the the public starting to come in there. They are running. There must be some hot deals around the corner. Somewhere. Either running. I thought they were running the Zen booth for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, they're uh, high. They're going to come tackle them. What, I wonder yeah. what is going on over here. We might have to just take people for a walk with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to give away something. We need the crowd to come. Hey, yeah. we got hats. So if people are coming to the expo, we got um, X2 hats, X2 shirts that are actually for you guys. If people come by, right. you won't give them out. Um, but uh, some cool stuff going on at the expo. Um, I guess, well, with that, before we, because uh, you guys are going to get torn away here, I'm sure, with people coming in finally. Um, what are some things people can look out for, like, for you guys moving forward, and maybe post-classic? I, obviously, you got Harris Chain coming up. But uh, what can uh, people look out for? Where can they follow you? Yeah, they can, uh, they can look me up on my website, KyleLawsonOutdoors.com, um, or, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Kyle Lawson Fisher, Kyle Lawson Guide Service. I got two pages, two different businesses. But. If you want to hunt gators, hunt frogs, yeah. you want to catch cats, 
and then maybe catch bass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. maybe catch bass. If you don't do anything like that, just hit me up. I'm kind of booked out a little bit right now, but uh, the summertime's coming up. That's a good time time of year to come to Santa Cooper. So, uh, any guide trips and other than that, fishing opens trying to uh, qualify for elites. I, I loved it last night at dinner where you're like. Whatever they want to catch, if they, if they want just a booze cruise, I'll take them. They're going to have a good time regardless. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's the kind of guide you want. But what about you, John? Yeah, same thing. Um, watch the Opens Point race for for Kyle. You know, hopefully he slides that top 10 by the end of the year. Uh, I want to be in the Classic Cut, so watch that AOI Points for Elite Series. And, yeah, same thing. He, he guides for catfish. I guide for for ducks. So if you want to check me out, johngarrettoutdoors.com um, okay. for a duck hunt trip. And, uh, you know, John Garrett fishing for – Follow my fishing stuff on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. Heck yeah. Well, guys, that's all going to be linked down below. So you can just go in the show notes, click on it. Highly recommend following these guys. And uh, obviously, it's not going to be long before we get you both back here on the show. But yeah, uh, Classic Week, it's exciting. We were just talking about everybody's here. I'm looking forward to uh, this f- first day of the expo going by and shaking some hands. It's going to be it's going to be a good week. But, yep, uh, uh, boys, appreciate you guys joining the, li- the, 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 the live show here. I love doing these in-persons, even though like this is totally – Low budget, janky. <laughs> this is good. I mean, this thing's a little heavy, but another night. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, folks, appreciate you guys tuning in. John, hopefully uh, you can hobble your way through the expo with uh, I'm try. No, no hospital visits for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, y'all be pulling for John over here. He's, he's troopering through. But uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. And uh, we're going to go live tomorrow again for day two of the classic. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.